Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and today I'm going to show you the automatic approach and landing on this uh, simulator, Boeing 737 simulator and also we'll compare it to the real airplane, so stay tuned! Alright my friends, let's start, so I'll put on my headset and everything and uh, it will help me to understand me more perfectly in the simulator itself and i tried already on prepared 3d png model but something went wrong with that simulator it's uncontrollable i don't know why And now I will try quite old simulator, the Microsoft FSX, and it's very old, but I also have PNG model over here installed, and I'm just gonna show you where we are. This is the Boeing 737, as you may see, perfect cockpit, uh, still no first officer, still no captain. We are in a ghost plane, but we are near to Burisma Airfield, and let's pause here, I'll just show you the chart. The Jepson chart of Barispo, and here we have runway 36 right. Why Barispo? Because, as you may probably know, I'm type rated Boeing 737 captain, and I fly this nice airplane. And why runway 36 right in Barispo? Because it's the only runway in Ukraine certified for category 3. A operations as you may find here category 3A decision high 50 feet here we are not lower than 200 meters it's standard category 3 of approach and we have nice weather oh come on what is wrong with you simulator let's go to the simulator so we are quite far away from this uh, not far away from this airport here is the runway here is the final approach fix and we need to prepare everything Let's go first to prepare the, our flight management computer. Now we need to select the landing flaps. Approach we have not selected. Yes, I know. We'll select them now. Okay, now we have speeds for VRF. It's our minimum speed for approach. 144 knots plus wind correction of 5 knots will give us 149 knots we should maintain during our approach so it's our target speed here's 40 knots 144 so not lower than that speed should be all right also I'll put some circles for better understanding go to fix runway 36 right come on here I'm heading 176 and distance 5 miles uh, 356 that's our final approach course and distance 10 miles it will give us some circles over here so as you can see we have two circles to cast off why uh, I haven't set it before takeoff yeah we'll set it right here so we have two circles our navigation display that will help us to know our distance so we'll go here to this point the final approach fix should be passed at 3000 feet also we need to set the Final approach course. Let's pause and go to our uh, chart again. I'm just going to show you. So here we need several parameters. Uh, final approach course 356 and uh, frequency for ILS approach 109 decimal seven. Also, also you may find them here. So 356 uh, 109 decimal seven. That's the India November Oscar as frequency. Also have. 15.9 VRDME in Barispo. That is, we should set in standby navigation receiver just in case of go around. The go around is very simple here. Climb and track 356, that's our final approach track, then uh, to 2000 feet round, then distance 10.8 nautical miles from Brown Roman, Papa turn right on track 144 to Charlie Yankee climbing 4000 feet. So, initial climb altitude for missed approach will be 2000 feet, and after passing 10.8 nautical miles from Brown Roman, Papa will go to Charlie Yankee. So, in case of go around, we'll just set we'll just um, reset our navigation frequency for this Brown Roman, Papa. We'll just switch them on. And here's the final approach fix 5.5 nautical miles also from Brown Roman, Papa. Papa, standard 30 degrees glass slope, minimum. So basically now we need to set minimum, we need to set frequency and final approach course. Let's go to the simulator again. Come on. Simulator. 
See you later, simulator. Crazy wild crocodile. Okay, final Porsche course 356 here. 356, that's our final course. Also, we need to set navigation receivers. Now, frequency for the uh, 109, that's small 7. And standby, we'll set just in case we need to go around. 15, that's small R. If you have the automatic approach, your go round will also be automatic. You need just to press toga and retract flaps. The autopilot will do its job to autopilot actually. So what you need, what is the difference for you uh, for this kind of approaches? Is you need to set two navigations frequencies for the same iOS frequency, and also you need to select two autopilots in command now we have one as you may see the other should be on until you pass 800 feet radio altimeter so here we have cmd then you intercept the initial course and the localizer course it will be single channel here and after that it will be cmd or land tree after passing 1500 but we'll see everything so final approach course set frequency set and also you need to select here on the FS panel radio knob and adjust with this small knob the radio altitude of 50 feet, the radio height. Height 50 feet, we have 70. Mm -hmm. Now we have 50. So radio high 50 feet. The same is for first officer. First officer, where are you? You need to go back to the cockpit from your toilet. What are you doing there? It's crucial stage of flying, you know, man? And here we go with the 50 radio alt for the first officer. Yes, so we set everything, auto brake is set, everything should be fine with the automatic approach and landing. Uh, to prepare for your automatic approach, do it ahead, so extend your flaps ahead. So now, for example, we were, we were clear for our approach, run with 3-6 right, turn left to final, cleared for uh, automatic for a category 3 of approach, run with 3-6 right, and you go just with this direct here, and just press the mouth over here and airplane will fall automatically to the final approach course as you can see we have bank now and it will fall directly there 3000 feet should be fine should be okay and also you need to decelerate a little bit just plan your deceleration ahead to be a final approach course at least with flaps uh, 5 so at this point we may select flaps 1 and reduce the speed. Speed is here. Reduce 190. Check the flaps. There are one, and we we'll just check the leading edge devices. Flaps and slats should be green. Okay, leading edge flaps. Okay. Now reducing. I put a little bit lower speed. I need to change it for higher. So not lower than this one indicator we also have the radio altimeter live and here we have the call out radio altimeter live QNH 2992 set for example and here is a glide slope scale also may put approach on standby instrument and we need to be one pilot to operate to check the other small over here. So here we have the localizer deviation bar and also we have the glide slope back. Two deviation bars to show us the deviation. And here the first also we call localizer live, localizer capture and so on. So now we can extend the flaps even more. Check the split flaps uh, flaps five and reduce speed to flaps five. I'll set 180, it should be fine. Quite far away from the final approach course, I just don't want to miss anything here. That's why I'm decelerating because there are no any planes. We are maintaining this final 
altitude should be a little bit less I think because I missed maybe creating this point so we should descend a little bit lower I think we should all right let's go and descend to 2700 should be fine just for training purpose never use it do not violate the chart restrictions but as I see I, I probably missed this point because it shows us 2741 should it should have shown that 3000 feet Anyway, it's not a big deviation for us, for this simulator, but in real life, don't do it. You need to pass final approach fix exactly as it's on the chart. Okay, we are doing quite nice, very perfect. Let's check out again. So we set the final approach course, we set the minimum, we set the navigation frequency, we set our FMC for approach with the speeds. And you may check also the runway. Here, runway 36 white is active. Come on, Arctic wire means we are reaching our 2700 feet. This point, for of course. Nice, we are doing great here. And I'll just go a little bit before with the gear down. So, gear down because we're gonna intercept the glide slope just from this point. So gear down, check the gear, and get down to reduce flaps 15. Go with the flaps 15 and reduce speed to flaps 15 speed. So here, not lower than this 15 sign symbol. You can see glide slope is already alive. Let me check it in my instrument. And also, first of all, there are clouds like laser alive. Set checked. Also, don't forget to adjust heading and just forgot it. So, we need to adjust this heading and just check the localizer. Oh, we are we are we haven't armed the approach. So, approach armed, have localizer capture or a capture and set final porch course. We'll do it later. Glass of capture, you need to set the missed approach altitude. So set final approach course 356 and missed approach altitude initially 2000 feet. Also, after you arm the approach mode, you also need to set the second autopilot on, and it will allow us for dual channel automatic approach and landing. When the arm profile, the speed is fine for flap 30. Flap 30. Reduce the speed to flap 30. 155 should be fine. Let's go, let's go. There is a minimum maximum speed for flaps extension here in the placard. As you can see, for 40, we need to have at least 162 or lower. So we are unable to extend now. Let's do it a little bit lower. Uh, we have master caution, air condition, off schedule descent. Disregard because we are descending below re before reaching cruising altitude. Now we can extend the flaps to our landing position and set the target speed of 149, as I told you before. And here we have flaps land 3. So after passing 1000, around 1500, we have the land 3 indication or CMD. There's also this bar flashing, I just haven't shown you. So, and yeah, we are continuing descending, passing 1470, it should be stabilized. We are, however, I haven't done the landing checklist in real life, of course, you need to do it. Uh, 1000, 1, and we are stable. After gear down, you also need to select this uh, switches on. You start switches to continuous and uh, speed brake on the for the landing passing out to mark here we should be on profile and now what happened we have flare armed at 500 feet passing 500 feet you should check the flare on and first officer put his or her hand on the toggle button near to toggle button to be ready for go around and I'll just pause here at 50 feet it's very crucial my friends so at 50 feet it's go no go decision 
Uh, at the same moment, first officer looks inside uh, the flight instruments and captain looks outside. So in case there is no running contact, you just press go around button, toga and go around. In case there is no flare, so this flare should be active. Uh, should be go should go from this white to this green state if it won't happen first officer presses toga and go around initiate it initiates so at 400 you know, around 400 with something the start cream start to rotate to create a pitch moment pitch up moment and at 150 array have approaching minimums call out from the airplane and we have run inside so captain also looking outside and first of all okay we have 50 flare as you can see reads hard at 27 feet and very smooth touchdown after touchdown immediately disengage autopilot with the reverse put Everything speed break up, auto brake in use, reverse uh, normal, and stop the airplane. So, as you can see, everything is working, the landing was alright and smooth. So, the thing you need to do for this approach just arm the second autopilot, make sure everything is set correctly for this approach and make sure you are certified, the airplane is certified and the runway is certified for that approach. Also you may have some malfunctions on airplane. Well it's rarely happened but sometimes it happen. happens. For example if you have auto throttle failure and it's an operator for your flight you can fly without auto throttle you just can uh, you just can operate your throttle levers manually, thrust levers manually but you cannot do the automatic landing. You can, however, make the automatic approach. You can do the automatic approach, but you need to land manually. For example, it's allowed for category two approach. Uh, if you have area of 300 meters and you have category Charlie airplane, you can disengage the autopilot at 80 feet to autopilots and land manually. So automatic approach, but manual landing for category two approach only. For category 3A it's impossible. So category 3A it's the lowest possible uh, minimum for Boeing 737 NG. Alright my friends and now let's go with a real airplane. I don't know who filmed this video but anyway let's see. It's a Boeing 737 cockpit. 1000. I just want to let you see what what is happening inside the cockpit at the time of the automatic approach so all the checklists were down everything was all right and they just entered this foggy auto marker just correctly on profile check with the chart approach and runway this the automatic system tells and they entered the fog as you can see and it's not a good quality video because you you don't see any kind of instruments. 500 for armed. 500 for armed. It's a basic call out. And then the trim starts to move. Yes. You can see and here have two hands on throttles on thrust levers. And now Captain looks on right side lane, not, not the runway, but actually approach lights inside range. Approaching minimum. The main. Minimums. Flare. Flare. 30. Retard. And after touchdown, immediately disengage the autobahn. Speed break up, and break reuse, reverse is normal. So that is how everything looks inside the real airplane for automatic landing everything is quite quick but we are doing we're going through the trainings on our simulators and we know everything what to do at what stages so for us it's quite okay to make auto lands uh, to do auto lands at least once a month we should train it we should do it according to our airline requirements so if you fly regularly not like 
like in a lockdown you need to make the out to do the auto land at least once per month and now my friends it is time for our awesome guide checklist so i'm very grateful to you for watching all my videos i hope you are watching them that is why you are awesome guy and to prove me that you need to follow awesome guy checklist first like this video then subscribe to my channel then ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time